mathematician Bobby Seagull is here to tell us what's caught his eye. Plenty indeed. Good morning to you. Good morning again. Loving the waistcoat. Yes, and I was, again, students expect to see me normally in a jacket and tie, so I look smart, but again, in homage to Mr. Southgate, I thought I'd... Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. And um, people will know you, of course, Bobby, because you've tutored Nagger and the rest of the Jane, the rest of the team through their maths GCSE this year. Optimistic for the 23rd of August, big yeah, results that day. Thursday, we're going to be in Uxbridge picking up their results, okay. so a nervous little wait till then. Yeah, lots of pressure for them and, of course, everybody else. Yeah. Do you know, I remember GCSE. when I picked up my GCSE results and there was a local paper, the Reading Evening Post, oh. clicking away oh, really? <laughs> as you were doing that. Were you one of the ones and going, yes. uh, <laughs> Eventually, yes, but it was quite nerve-wracking. So good luck to all the people that are getting their results. I didn't pick up my GCSE results. results. Didn't do GCSEs. I knew. Right. Oh, level, yeah. okay. oh, levels, trick, I'm that old. I'm that right, old. let's have right. a look at what you've picked out. This story in particular, I think, is really important that you've picked out on the Telegraph uh, this morning. Set back and push for a global bullying code. This is really important because of how bullying has now progressed into online cyberbullying. It's completely changed. So, again, even myself as a student, bullying could happen in the school, in the premises. And when you leave at 3 30, 4 o'clock, go home, that's the end. Yeah. Or schools can deal with it physically in school. Uh, but now, because of online technology, again, your Facebook, your Twitter, your Snapchat, young children are finding that actually when they leave school, it's outside of the teacher's control because kids are bullying each other online. So there was a, a scheme set up by Facebook and Snapchat where young kids could report bullying, but when they reported bullying, um, they would be suggested to call Childline. But young I think not one person called Childline on the basis of this. And I think the message is absolutely important to have schemes to tackle online bullying, but kids don't pick up the phone. Like, kids message. So I think they need, it's the right idea, but the wrong medium. Perhaps they need to come up with another scheme. Yeah, I also think it's getting that information across to kids know that if they're using Facebook or Snapchat or Instagram, that they can then do that. But there is the mm. facility there, because if it's not being advertised, then how will they know? Yeah, I think that's the key thing. So it's, it's a good idea, but we need to get the message out to kids more. Again, I, as a teacher, I wasn't even aware of this scheme. Mm. So clearly it's, it's the right idea, but needs to be Message that and it's, it's so hard, isn't it, for them? Because people like me of a certain age will probably just say, well, just don't go on Snapchat, don't yeah. go on. But it's not, it's, it's so much woven into the fabric of their lives nowadays. It is like young, yeah, even my younger brother, he's 24, he's going to be a barrister. So he's like, you think a sensible young man, but he documents his life on Instagram like lots of other young people. So I think there is this pressure for them to have everything yeah. documented. Right, um, this is in the, is this the Observer. The flags are out for the scholars of St George's. This is David Conn basically writing about the, the fruits of England's World Cup because of what the FA did with St George's Park and, and trying to plan for the future. Absolutely. So, obviously, lots of credit goes to Gareth Southgate for calling this team together, but actually it's been a long-term plan. So, actually... Germany in the year 2000, they came bottom of a European championship group beneath England, actually. We came third and Germany came fourth. And actually, the German Football Association decided to try and revamp their whole footballing structure. And England done the same thing. So that we've had a lot of success. We've had our women's team getting to the semi-final last year. Mm. The men's under 17, under 20 won the World Cup. So it's not just a short-term success. Actually, we're building for the future. Mm. Fingers crossed for four years' time. We were just talking about... Um youngsters these days and maths and how proficient they are if they haven't got their calculator and their iPhones in front of them. And um, this is also an interesting one. Uh, the paper here, I think it's in The Times this morning, uh, the Sunday Express even, uh, millennials cannot cope with money. They're not financially savvy. Yes, I think what this is saying is that young people are so over-reliant on online technologies that they don't print things out. So I think there was a survey there and it said that um, young people, I think 80% of people do better when they print out their statements and read things rather than online. And again, when you get an attachment online, we're like, yeah, I've got it there, PDF, you'll scroll through. But then you get a physical copy of a bank statement, you'll look at that, you look at sort of more carefully and go, oh, what's this outgoing here? So I think it's just a case of actually printing things out do make a difference to people rather well, than it, just a constant online scan. It says here, research shows 40% of UK adults say the removal of paper statements could affect their finances. Yeah, again, I think it's just when you receive online things, you know, let's be honest, I, I, you, you, see, you see the PDF attachment, how many people actually click on it yeah. and yeah. scan it through? And on your phones, they're quite small, whereas a physical paper thing, it's a lot easier to read. Oops. Let's quickly have a look at this one. Um, it's Tim Peake, He's talking about Wi-Fi. Um, said it was too slow in space, and now he says it's also <laughs> that way. It's too slow here as well, down on Earth. Yes, yeah, so actually, as a child, I wanted to be an astronaut. Um, but then one of my friends sort of mistakenly told me, oh, you have to be five foot ten. And none of my family is five foot ten, so I gave up that ambition. Really? That, yeah. Is that why? Yeah, misinformation, fake news even back as a child. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but this is, a, this is a really interesting story because I think nowadays we sort of expect 
internet to work immediately. If it's not working after two seconds, like, oh, what's wrong? It's yeah. an outrage. But I think there is an issue in terms of urban areas like Glasgow's, your London's, your Manchester's. We generally get good Wi-Fi, but in the urban, in sort of provincial areas, countryside yeah. is not as good. So actually, it is something that's important. It's interesting that the, the, the things that you, the ambitions that you have as a child that you then give up on, because I wanted to be a heart surgeon. And then when I was about 10, my mum gutted a salmon <laughs> and I nearly fainted and I gave up. Okay, I, because... I literally, I just went, that's it, I can't be a heart surgeon. You know. Well, I wanted to I be really an actress. Happened. And did all my exams for the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Arts. And mum, I mean, this is quite uh, common with Indian parents, no stereotypes at all, was like, nope, accountant, lawyer or doctor. Ooh. None of those did I become. Journalist, <laughs> in fact. Um, here's one for the Sunday Times this morning. Uh, designer jobs only for the posh. Talk us through this, Bobby. Yes, I think this story is sort of grounded on the fact that in state schools, there's a the sort of pressure on the curriculum. So there's less emphasis on uh, the music, the arts, the sports, the dramas. Um, but the VNA is saying there's a solution. One of the ideas is let's go and take our national treasures and send them across the country. And there's actually a great story of Grayson Perry. I think he was going to join the army at 16, mm. but a school teacher uh, recommended art. And obviously after that, life changed and we've got a national figure. Yeah. So I think it's making sure that, again, as a maths teacher, I love maths. I, I want more money on maths education, but I also acknowledge that we need people in the country that are literate in the arts, um, as well as just, it's a nice thing in terms of your life quality, but people that can go on to become great artists, designers, etc. It's been lovely to see you this morning. Thank Absolutely. you very much for coming yeah, in. Good luck. Good luck to the breakfast team for yes, the 23rd August. of August. Good luck to all your other students exactly. as well and everybody getting GCSE results. Uh, Bobby, good to see you. Thanks Thank a lot. You. Thanks, Bobby. Uh, stay with us. Headlines coming up.